Why can't the U.S. just build more B-2 stealth bombers, one of the most advanced aircraft in history? With only 21 ever made, and global security more complex than ever, it seems like an obvious move. But the truth is far stranger. Only 21 were ever built, and the intricate industrial system that produced them is long gone. Production ended in 2000, and with that, the entire infrastructure required to make more b 2 vanished. Tools, blueprints, facilities. Engineers, technicians, and software specialists who worked on the B-2 moved on or retired. Many had top-level clearances and decades of niche experience in stealth coding, radar reduction, and structural composites. All while modern aerospace standards and technologies have evolved far beyond what the B-2 was originally designed for. The original environment that made the B-2 possible no longer exists. And rebuilding it would cost more, take longer, by the time each aircraft rolled off the assembly line. The total cost, when factoring in research, development, infrastructure, and procurement, exceeded $2.1 billion per unit. It requires about 119 hours of ground maintenance, nearly five full days. That's due in part to its complex radar-absorbing coating, which must be inspected and repaired frequently to maintain stealth. This means each B-2 needs highly controlled, climate-protected hangars, custom-built, and costing millions on their own. This made it the most expensive aircraft in the world by unit cost. That's where the B-21 Raider comes in. That hard lesson directly influenced the development of its successor, the B-21 Raider. This next-generation stealth aircraft is built to be scalable, affordable, and designed for operational flexibility, three things the B-2 lacked, and deliver less value than simply developing a new solution the Raider uses modern, digitized assembly processes. Unlike the B-2, which relied on bespoke production lines and tools, this includes 3D modeling, automated tooling, and a distributed supplier network that's been carefully preserved and documented for long-term sustainability. Production is already underway, and even future unmanned operations. It fits into a broader vision of a modernized fleet that can respond flexibly to evolving global needs. And it's the reason why bringing back the B-2 isn't just unlikely, it's unnecessary. With early models built at Northrop's secure facility in Palmdale, California, the specialized tools are gone, the expertise dispersed, and the economics no longer make sense. Instead of rebuilding the past, the U.S. is investing in the B-21 Raider, a bomber designed from the ground up for the realities of today and tomorrow. It's not just smarter and more affordable, it's scalable. In the end, the B-2 ISNT coming back because its successor is already here, and it S built for the future. And budget priorities shifted dramatically, requiring fewer repairs and allowing for faster turnaround between missions. The aircraft's design includes easier access points for maintenance crews and simplified systems to reduce downtime. One of the most significant improvements is cost control. Unlike the B-2, which cost over $2 billion each, the B-21 is projected to cost around $550 million per unit. While still a substantial investment, with geopolitical tensions cooling in the 1990s, the maintenance regime includes specific handling procedures for its skin and specialized cleaning systems to preserve radar absorption properties. These requirements make the aircraft one of the most logistically demanding in the U.S. inventory. Congress sharply cut back on spending and the B-2 program was reduced to just 21 airframes. That decision effectively increased the per-unit cost even further by spreading the massive R and D budget across fewer planes. That knowledge wasn't always digitized or documented in modern systems. Rebuilding the workforce would be like assembling a puzzle with half the pieces missing, and even the people with the expertise to build them. In this video, we'll explore the hidden reasons behind this mystery. The missing factories, they were custom engineered for stealth manufacturing, precision shaping, and radar absorption. Once the B-2 program ended, many of those components were dismantled, destroyed, or repurposed. This wasn't an oversight. It was standard practice to reduce classified exposure and cut costs. As a result, recreating those systems now would require rebuilding everything from scratch. The massive cost hurdles and how the B-21 Raider is changing everything. What happened to the B-2? and why can't it come back? Much of its avionics, stealth configuration, and mission software remain compartmentalized. That means even within government circles, 
access to essential manufacturing knowledge is limited. So even if the blueprints still exist, recreating the full manufacturing chain, including parts from now defunct suppliers, would be nearly impossible without a multi-billion dollar restart initiative. The B-2 Spirit isn't just rare, it's irreplaceable. The aircraft's unique shape and stealth features required specialized jigs, molds, and assembly lines. These weren't generic tools. Worse yet, the human side of production faded just as fast. The situation is further complicated by the tight classification of the B2S internal systems. And such an initiative would take years, possibly a decade, before a single new airframe could be completed. So, the idea of building just a few more B2S isn't grounded in reality. It's not about willingness, it's about feasibility. The B-2 is notoriously expensive to operate. For every hour the aircraft is in the air, the B-2 may look sleek and futuristic, but underneath its curved exterior lies a financial challenge that made continuing production unsustainable. It's a technological marvel, but one too delicate and expensive to mass-produce or operate as a frontline staple in today's fleet. Originally, the U.S. Air Force planned to build 132 B-2 bombers. However, the Cold War ended before mass production could take place, but the high costs didn't end after production. In fact, even rain and humidity can damage the aircraft's stealth materials. The cost per flight hour has been estimated to exceed $150,000. That's several times more than what it costs to operate legacy bombers like the B-52. This severely limited the Air Force's ability to deploy the B-2 regularly. The jet became more of a strategic asset, kept in pristine condition and used sparingly, than a platform suited for frequent missions. This means its hardware and software components are designed to be upgraded over time, rather than being locked into a fixed configuration. The Raider can evolve with new sensors, avionics, and mission profiles as technology advances. That makes it far more adaptable and cost-efficient over its lifespan. With every mission involving complex maintenance cycles, infrastructure support, and limited flight availability, it became clear that the B-2 was never designed for scalability. This financial challenge led directly to a new design philosophy, one that would carry stealth forward, but without the burden of extreme upkeep. While the B-2 was a masterpiece, its costs and complexity made it unsustainable for long-term deployment or replication. The B-21, currently under development by Northrop Grumman, was crafted to incorporate everything the Air Force learned from the B-2 program. Crucially, the B-21 is built using modular systems and open architecture. Another major change lies in how the B-21 is manufactured. The Raider is also designed with maintainability in mind. Its stealth materials are more durable. Strategically, the B-21 is intended to operate in a wider range of environments with greater survivability and range. Its missions could span surveillance, long-range targeting. In essence, the B-21 isn't just a replacement for the B-2. It is a complete reimagining of what stealth aviation can be. The B-2 Spirit was a breakthrough in stealth design, but it belonged to a moment in history that can't be recreated.